Hello world, uh, I am Sanjay Malik and I love flow side geometry. So uh, in this series of uh, lectures on the flow side geometry, in, uh, uh, today I will be talking about uh, sorting by uh, using the flow side geometry. Okay. So the flow side geometry sorting, I will be talking about flow side geometry sorting and this is part 5 of the talk. Okay. So, so far we have discussed what a flow cyclometer can do for us and uh, in order to and what uh, in order to do uh, what it does, what are the components required, how the different components work and how a data is generated. So, these are the things that we have uh, discussed so far. So, uh, we can we can identify the cells or we can appreciate the cells and we display the cells on uh, on the, on the charts and plots okay, so for example this is an example where we have two flows in three display and we have got three population okay so we have got the population now the cells are coming over here so this is what we are finding okay so yes so this is what we are finding okay So this is what is the scenario we have. That means in the, this is a sample where it's a heterogeneous population where we have a population that is stain that, that is uh, that is showing stain for one fluorochrome or that is expressing one particular uh, protein. The other group, other cells are expressing the other kind of uh, the protein, and then we have some some cells those which are not expressing either of the groups. So we have basically so the sample here ha is heterogeneous sample. Now for my study, I want all of this population separated. I want to do a uh, my my requirement is I want to do a downstream uh, analysis of uh, the transcriptomes. Okay, transcriptomes transcriptome analysis for all these three population and I need them separated however my sample is heterogeneous and all the cells are mixed together in, uh, in order to separate these cells uh, there are other methods also that can be employed but flow cytometry offers multivariate analysis so that way uh, it is uh, superior when we are using many parameters as compared to the other methods like magnetic sorting or uh, uh, antibody based uh, panning and all these things uh, so how the sorting happens uh, by flow cytometry we can distinguish okay we can appreciate the different population we can appreciate the three different population now how i can get this population so uh, in layman terms i can say that i rely on the instrument i do the gating okay i can do the gating so it is gate one this is gate two and this is gate three and i tell the instrument okay fine sort or sort the cells of g1 okay G2 and G3. Okay, so then the instrument can sort and separate to me. So that is how I'm relying on the instrument. But how does the instrument uh, perform this sorting? Okay, how, how the instrument is performing this sorting? We'll talk about that. In order to sort what it is required for the sorter. Okay, so we'll we'll see a general uh, structure or general anatomy of a sorter. Okay, so if you are talking about a sorter, so the sorter is something like this. Okay, so there is a flow cell. Okay. There is a flow cell and the sample is sample is injected into the flow cell. So there is somewhere a sample tube is there. There are cells in this. Okay. And the uh, situated sit, sit into the flow cell, the sample entered into the flow cell. The same way both the sit and sample here are driven by hydrodynamic focusing and by Okay, hydrodynamic focusing and we have the cells here and there is a laser. Okay, there is laser illuminating the samples and as the cells are crossing the laser. Uh, so as the cells are crossing the laser, it's illuminating the cells and the signals are collected. Okay, with power scatter side scatter fluorescence. So from this signal, what we see, this signal is displayed on to the computer and are displayed on our uh, plots we see this three population considering this three population I mean, anytime a cell of interest is 
crossing the laser here, the cell show up here as a dot, the other type of cell when it is crossing the laser, it shows up here, so on and so forth. So we set the population. So what happens as the cells are crossing the laser here and the cells they travel through and they they go to the west. If you are not doing this, then there is a west cup. Okay, so it takes the sample into the west. So basically the cells it forms a stream and I am talking about a stream in air, shorter stream in air kind of shorter today. Okay, so it is called stream in air. Okay. So that means there is a stream which generated and it comes into the air. Okay. And uh, most of the uh, high speed sorter are actually stream in air based sorter. There are other sorters there are uh, which can physically pick the cell. Okay, so there is a actuator arm which can physically pick the cell. Now there are uh, switch uh, switch uh, uh, acoustic switching uh, systems also there. So those are the different type of uh, uh, sorters available. I'll be primarily discussing about the um, stream in air stream in air sorter and that is something uh, going to be uh, there for quite some time now. Okay, these are fast and uh, so here what is happening the cells as the cells are getting illuminated and then they go into the wish. If I wish to collect the cells, if I wish to collect the cells separated, okay, so I have two population, I want to sort them separated, okay, then how I can get it? if you look into the textbook, this is what we see in the textbook, okay. So the cells getting separated into the two different uh, compartment or two different tube and the cells that is not sorted at all. So this is what I am seeing in the uh, textbook. So how 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 it deflects? So how it uh, how it does this? Okay. So uh, let's uh, look at the process now. Okay. This is a general anatomy. There are voltage plates. Okay. And this is how it happens. So let's look in dive deep into this component. So I start it from the flow cell. Okay, so this is a flow cell. In the flow cell, the laser is illuminating the cells. Okay, so there is laser. Laser is illuminating the cells. Okay, so the laser is illuminating the cells. It could be like this. Okay. So as the cells are getting illuminated by the laser, there is light and process get happening that shows up on the plot. Okay, that shows up on the plot. But as the cell is illuminated, then it is coming in the plot, we make a decision. We, we you have to first define, okay? So we just detect some first. We detect the cell, yes, whether the cell is of my interest or not, okay, whether the cell is of any other interest. Okay, so whether the cell is in my interest or not, where the cell is coming. So the moment it is detected, okay, and then what happens to the cell after the detection has is done? The cell moves, okay. The cell is not stagnant; it is flowing, okay. So the cell moves, and then what we use is called a nozzle, okay. So what we so there are two types of stream in air sorter. One is uh, uh, cubic based, and the other is uh, pure uh, stream in air sorter. So here I am talking about a cubic based sorter where the cell are illuminated in the flow cell cubit, okay, in the flow cell cubit. And as the cell is exiting the flow cell cubit, there is something called a nozzle, okay. So say for example, you put it this way, nozzle. A nozzle is a device, okay, and this, a, a nozzle is a device which has, uh, uh, there is a, there is a orifice in the nozzle and the cells, they exit through the nozzle, Okay, and why why we put the nozzle here? Okay, so here if we if we don't have anything, then it could be like a thick stream of sample and see through that is coming out of that. Okay, we won't be having control over that. We won't be having control over the stream. Okay, so there are two purposes with the nozzle that we can do. One is we have a control over the stream, and number two, the nozzle is used to vibrate. So there is a piezo actuator associated with the nozzle and the nozzle can vibrate okay so we use vibrational uh, uh, state of the nozzle okay so the 
the nozzle can vibrate. So what is the what is why do, why do we need to vibrate the nozzle at all? Okay, so if you don't use anything, if you have a fine orifice here, then also it will follow, follow it will make a stream fine. So it makes a stream. Okay, so it makes a uh, it makes a stream. It makes a stream and and the stream would break into droplet at some point of time. The streams wouldn't be a uh, continuous always, depending on the uh, velocity of the stream, the stream would break into droplet at some point of time. However, this breaking is uncontrolled. If we are not using any energy, then this bit breaking of the stream is uncontrolled and we won't be achieving the desired breakpoint. Okay, so I'll talk about why you would need a desired breakpoint. But uh, using a vibration, so if you use a vibration here, then by vibrating this, we can adjust the there are two things uh, that is that is frequency okay so how many times the nozzle is vibrating per unit uh, uh, unit time and what is the amplitude okay? what is the extent the nozzle is vibrating to amplitude okay so frequency and amplitude that is one uh, that is adjusted for the uh, that is adjusted for the nozzle vibration Okay. So if we vibrate the nozzle precisely, we maintain the frequency and the amplitude, then we can control where the where the stream could break. Okay. So where the stream could break, that we can control. Okay. Higher the frequency. Okay. So higher the frequency, the more the number of droplets it generates per unit time. Okay. So it is vibrating faster, the more the number of droplets it generates, and lower the uh, and when we want to break it at higher or lower position, that position of break of is governed by the amplitude. Okay, so basically it's a combination of both frequency and amplitude that is desired to break the stream at certain point. Okay, a desired point that's called drop break off. Okay, that stream break off. So uh, by having a desired break point, what is the advantage? So here as the cell is getting illuminated okay and then it then it moves okay then it moves but as long as the stream is continuous the cell is still in connection with the system so the cell moves in the system okay? the cell moves in the system like this okay and as the cell is reaching the edge of this so here since we are using a frequency and amplitude to control the break off then this distance okay so the sample from detection to the edge of the stream that remains fixed fixed okay so this is this remains fixed okay and this is called drop delay okay so this is called drop delay Okay, that means how long it takes to break into drops and once we, if, we, if we can control this break of point okay we know the drop delay there is there are process to find out the drop delay that i will be talk, talking in a separate uh, chapter altogether so here i am i'm just talking about say for example this is fixed okay this drop break up point is fixed we know the drop delay and then what we can do is we use we use electrodes okay and charging to charge the stream okay so how it happens is so first is we have made a detection then it will be deflection how do we deflect the cells into the desired direction okay, so how do we deflect the cells into the desired direction okay so, so if i want to collect the green cells okay the cells that is bound to the green fluorescent uh, molecule okay yeah then then we have cells that are bound to the red fluorescent molecule if i want to collect the red cell to the say for example to the right and i'm i want to collect it to the left so it's not that green has to go to left always i can reverse it depending on that's the, the how i select okay so here i say i, I give a command to the instrument sort say for example gate one sort gate one to uh, left and sort get to to right okay this is what the command i'm giving and and we have the 
drop break up point that is stabilized fixed and now we know what is this then when we give a command short command to the instrument what the instrument would do the moment it, it, it detects a cell the moment it detects a cell okay, the moment it detects the cell that is falling into a desired region then it waits for the cell to travel to the edge of the stream okay it is as the stream is about to break in the system what it as it applies a charge so there are electrode con electrodes that is uh, associated with the flow cell and one electrode is providing positive charge the other electrode providing negative charge okay so what it can do is it can charge and this can discharge okay and this can apply a further uh, negative charge okay so and then there are in the instrument there are two voltage plates again okay so these are these are maintained at very high potential difference somewhere around 10,000 volts okay, it's a very high potential difference so say for example this is negative and this is positive okay so positive plate and negative plate so as the cells uh, and we want to sort the green cell so here consider here the green cell is the at the edge of the stream the moment it is at the edge of the stream in order to deflect this cell so at the edge that means what in the next step what it is happening this cell is breaking off from the stream and it goes to the droplet so on flow cytometer we never sort cells per se we sort droplets that contains the cell of our choice so here here as the cell as, as the drop drop breakup is happening the droplet carries the cell but here what we are doing we we are with the instrument the instrument is given and uh, the instrument is set so to sort or deflect the cell to the left that means in, on the left there is negative voltage plate so in order to deflect the cell to the left what we need to have we need to have a positive so that means the moment the cell is going to exit the stream okay as the stream is going to break off the stream the here the instrument applies a positive charge to the stream okay and it and as the droplet breaks up so it carries a positive charge okay so the droplet there is no positive charge so there is positive charge on the droplet and on the ex under the influence of the external electric electromagnetic field what happens it it's a positive charge carrying droplet they deviate towards the negative plate negative voltage plate so they deflect towards the negative voltage plate and then they are collected separately so those which uh, say for example there is a green cell okay followed by a red cell okay, so then, then what will happen the moment the red cell the red cell is also tracked okay the moment the red cell is reaching the edge of the stream the stream is neutralized okay so and then applied uh, opposite charge when the negative charge because on the right we have positive charge plate so when it applies a negative charge and as the cell is breaking off that point of time it carries the negative charge and the negative charge would negative charge containing or negative charge surrounded surrounding part, uh, droplets would deflect towards the right where there is a positive plate plate voltage plate so this is how it is and what if there is a cell that doesn't have either of the uh, fluorochrome I, it doesn't fall in either of this region so for example it is coming in this region okay so it doesn't fall in it's coming in this region then in such case if we are not giving a short command we don't wish to sort this cell then in such case what will happen the stream stays neutral okay so it applies a positive charge then neutralizes by negative charge further applies a negative charge then the second cell is deflected then it applies a positive charge and the stream is neutral and when the stream is neutral that means the droplets that are generated are also not carrying any net negative net charge and they will not be deflected on the this on the effect of the external external voltage plate so they would go to the they would go to the west okay so this is how the separation happening okay so this is uh, detection then here it is deflection then here it is collection okay so there are few things that we need to know about the nozzle okay so there are different type of nozzle uh, one of the nozzle that is on uh, bd so they call it the bd aria nozzle okay 
brief relax area nozzle that looks something like this. So there is a and this nozzle that comes with various different size. Okay, it could be like a 50 micron nozzle, 70 micron nozzle, 100 micron nozzle. Okay, uh, 150 micron nozzle, 85 micron nozzle like that. There are different type of different nozzles with different um, size of orifice. Okay. And these nozzles, depending on the size of the cells, these nozzles are used. Okay, so the ratio of the, the cell to the nozzle size is generally they consider uh, five to some some something around five to seven times. Okay, so if the cell if I if I want to sort a cell of twenty microns, I would be using a hundred micron nozzle. If I want to sort a cell of say five micron, and then I would be using something a uh, fifty micron would be uh, good enough for that. Okay. Uh, so this is how we set the nozzles, which nozzle to be used. And while we are using this nozzle, we have to keep another thing in mind: the flow cytometers. We we change the seat pressure. So that means on an analyzer, generally the seat pressure is constant, whereas on a sorter, we can vary the seat pressure depending on the kind of nozzle that we are using. Generally, lower nozzle will have a requirement of higher seat pressure and higher nozzles would require a lower seat pressure. So, this pressure also here, it, uh, it affects how the stream breakup is going to happen. If we have a high pressure with a large bore nozzle, then there would be, uh, it would be very difficult to obtain a stable stream breakup. And the same way, if the uh, pressure is too low, then also we will not be able to attain a stable stream breakup. So, uh, here the, this is as simple as this is, this is in very short and uh, then how we how we compute the drop delay and how different instruments handle it that I will be talking in a separate class altogether and here what you need to just understand so in a very simple way as the cells are illuminated the detection happens after the detection the decision is made whether to short the cell to sort, sort the cell, which direction it could be sorted, and then undesired cell that would so deflection, and then finally we do a collection. So detection, decision, deflection, collection. Okay, so here these are the detection, decision, and deflection. detection, decision, deflection and finally collection. Okay. And finally collection. This is how it is performed. Okay. So I will I will talk in detail about uh, greater detail about how it is so the sorting setup is done, all those things. However, one the, the few things that you will need to keep in mind is the size of the cell, the size of the nozzle that is used, okay, and uh, so here this is a simple pro uh, and the size of the cell that is used, how we prepare the cell, there is a uh, nice single cell suspension, the better the cell suspension which prepare the better the sorting is, if there is a large clump that is coming that could clog the nozzle, then it would again completely distort the sorting process, okay, and so, so this is a yeah, the best sorter and there are other instruments where there is a uh, jet in air okay so the, the illumination happens in the air here the illumination happens at the flow cell okay and uh, uh, that's uh, that's for the sorting now i will I would, I would elaborate on the sorting with respect to the setups with respect to the troubleshooting in some other video okay thanks for your uh, patience and thank you for um, being with me while I was talking about sorry.